Hi, Amanda Armstrong. Welcome to the back of his Teardown Lab. I thought it time to retest this Game Boy Advance, which has a problem with its D-pad. And it uh, it's really had a bit of abuse, actually. It's, this was a brand new, perfectly pristine black one till I gave it to my now wife. And now it's kind of a totaled one. But just have a look now. It, oh, down works, right works. And the problem is left doesn't work. And I'll try to show you that by going into the game. You can go right, but you can't go left. And up, down does work. Trust me, I've already tried the up and down. But yeah, it's the left. The left is the problem. So I'm going to pull it apart and we'll just have a quick look again. I did do a video on this a while back. And uh, it's actually really starting to annoy me that I couldn't really figure out what was wrong with it. So I just couldn't let it lie, unfortunately. And I'm going to... Let's put it on this sort of jiffy bag. Don't want to scratch up the screen any worse than it already is. So I've got the tri wing, tri lobe, whatever you want to call it, screwdriver. It's they're really cheap, by the way. So if you do intend on having a dig around one of your Game Boy or Nintendo products, because Nintendo products tend to use this, then get hold of one. And I'd really love just to get this working because I'd want to sort of try polishing up the case or maybe even recase it. But I do, I do like the original black. It's sort of a, a deep black. It just sucks light out of the room. It's so dark. So that's all the screws. Just a couple actually. There's a, a sort of a very hidden secret screw in the battery compartment, but that looks like a normal one. So we'll just get to that in a moment. Don't lose these. I should think they're quite hard to get hold of. At least quite hard to get hold of some sort of high street shop. You can probably go get them on eBay. So many people dismantling Game Boys and things and chucking them, chucking them on eBay as parts. It's amazing how uh, damaged some of these really get. I mean, this is one that was given to somebody who knows better, not a sort of child. Yeah, it still got damaged. So you think Game Boys that belong to children must really get knackered. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hook up, I'm going to solder into it a power supply connection so that we can actually flip it around. Just get the voltage set on that. So my plan is to sort of solder onto here so that we can have it actually powered up and running and do sort of little experiments with it. So these are battery terminals. You can see a minus and a plus. It's quite nicely marked actually. While I'm waiting for the soldering iron to heat up, I'm just going to remove some of these button caps and things like that that we don't really want to damage or mislay. But we know they're going to get in our way through this sort of test. So those bits aside, what else can we take apart? I think that's about as far as we go until we unscrew the PCB. There's this on off switch thing or is this a volume switch that's weird so we have this actual on off switch here but it's actually just pretty much a sliding switch there's no hard stop in it the actual hard stop from the switch comes from this spring in the actual switch body how intriguing never seen that before okay let's get some solder on these pads so I'm just going to tin them near the base of the pad there's the positive doesn't really want to stick that's probably understandable it's, it's fighting us and there's the negative we'll just attach our wires now the reason it doesn't want to stick is that it's a lot of metal that you're trying to heat up when you're doing this sort of thing. And it, um, you, unless your soldering iron is super hot and all you're super quick with it, it's going to suck all the heat out of the soldering iron and then the uh, solder won't melt. Right, we'll just test that. Let's pop in a cartridge. Which is really easy to pop in without the back. There's no retainer on it. In fact, is it even in the right way? Uh, no, that's the way it goes. So the power is on, and then I'm going to slide this on off switch to on. 
Hmm, not seeing any life. <clears throat> what have I got wrong here? Let's check the power again. Voltage one, two, three volts. Current set to nothing. So it is drawing current. Oh, there it is. This the sliding switch is very odd. It just doesn't give you any feedback at all when you move that. So it's coming on. Where's our game? Off, on. Bit of sound there. So this is our Mario Super Mario Land 2, the six golden rings game. Okay. I think maybe because that switch is sort of so loosely, um, so we go right, but we can't go left. We can go. So yeah, because that switch is so loose, just any slight movement and it'll knock off, but that's fine. We're aware of it now, let's just continue on. So we know the D-pad is here, so this is the sort of tracking and PCB area that we're interested in, but we're obviously interested in the other side of the board, so we're going to have to take these other screws out. I'm just going to turn my soldering iron off. It's a bit noisy. I'm half tempted to put a solder jumper actually on this power switch, so it's always sort of on for us, but we'll worry about that if it seems apparent that it's needed in the moment. Got the PCB. I'm just seeing if there's a way that we can get the screen out. Okay, so I'm just temporarily going to undo the screen ribbon cable. But I noticed actually when I was last doing this, there's a bit of dirt or something's got lodged and worked its way under the screen. So I don't really mind kind of getting the screen out so we can look at that. Bit closer. I don't. Pretty sure I have never done this before, so we'll have a little quick investigation to see how the screen might be held in. I'm just going to try to leave her up at the corner, just under this ribbon cable. Yeah, I think it's kind of coming there. It's glued, so we've got to be a bit careful. We don't snap it. Normally things that are glued in don't have to survive uh, removal because they're normally being replaced, so be very careful with this. Yeah, and the screwdriver itself is actually prying on the glass of the screen when you do this, so you've got a very good chance of mashing it. Yeah, we're getting there. Be nice to get rid of that big piece of filth though from under the screen. So if you're sort of considering uh, doing this yourself, you'll have to go through these sort of same same stages to get to this part to try to get something under your screen, sort of clean it out. Get one of those lint free cloths that come with glasses. I'll do it, dry glasses. Okay, there's some, uh, there is a sort of adhesive um, bezel around the screen. You can just about see it there, the reflection sort of getting pulled off too. So. I might actually have a problem when I get the screen out that it might not, uh, I might not have the adhesive to get it back in, but I think fixing the button is more important at this stage because if the button doesn't work then it doesn't really matter, there's no point fixing anything. Alright, so I'm going to be tr just ever so gentle now, I want to try to stop that foam tape from, yeah we go. Great, screen off, dirt is actually on the screen itself. I do have rolls of this sort of foam tape that I could cut and manhandle, but we don't really want to get involved with that. So yeah, this is the bit here. You can just about see it in the light that was actually on the screen. And uh, a yeah, bit of random filth. Good. So I'll plug the screen back in. 
this is our fully dismantled unit. So if, if you ever wanted to rehouse a Game Boy Advance, I guess this is as far as you need to take it to sort of get into its new housing. Right, I've been digging around my continuity tester on my multimeter and I've worked out which contacts on these pads are actual going to sort of the negative of the battery. And you can see on my diagram here where each of these two two sort of pair, all these pairs of pins basically represent these pairs up here. So you can see, you know, this one, this one, this one, and this one are actually all connected. So we don't care about that because we know the others must be inputs to this as the main CPU here. So what I've done is I've sort of gone through and held them on the sort of contacts that you know now to be the non-grounded ones and just sort of work your way up. And you, every now and then you'll hear a beep. Then you count off what pin it is it beeped at and then you end up with a diagram like this. So if you imagine this is the bottom left corner of the chip, this is the bottom left corner of the chip. At pins 6 I have right, 7 I have down, 8 I have nothing and 9 I have up. There's no left. And I'm going to hazard a guess. Left is either going to be on pin 8 or pin 5. So what I'm going to do is get a piece of Kynar wire, very fine Kynar wire, and try to make a connection between here and left. And then we'll fire it all up and we'll have a test. So it's going to take me a little bit of time to strip that. So we're probably going to get a jump cut in here. So I have my roll of Kynar wire. And more importantly, and most importantly, if you're dealing with Kynar wire, your dedicated set of Kynar wire strippers. And there are really expensive Kynar wire strippers out there, but uh, I've found over the years, testing different things, that these cheap normal wire strippers work as long as you only use them for Kynar wire. So what you can do is you adjust this nut back and forth to make this aperture different sizes, and you can see or barely see. It's a very small hole because this Kynar wire, and it's from Farnell, let's see if it says what it is, uh, 30AWG, so it's pretty, pretty thin. It's a single strand. The insulation is very good on Kynar wire, it doesn't melt. So before you break off a piece, just strip the end and you can just about barely see a very tiny bit of stripped length, which you can then just use the cutter part of your strippers to sort of adjust to what you need. And these are doing, you know, really good for doing actual proper PCB mods where you'll have that in more or less permanently when you're done. So I'm going to give myself a generous portion though because we're actually testing this and we can actually, you know, trim that down later. There's no point spending many, many minutes on it right now. So I'm going to just trim the two ends and that's it. They're sort of the solder iron is going to go on. And while that's warming up, we'll just have a look, see how we're going to position this. And so you can see got a very nice sort of bit of test cable there, single strand goodness. So looking at our diagram, we know we're going to try to go for pin eight. Um, now trying to identify pin eight could be a bit tricky again to my eyes. So I'm going to just buzz out the same way we buzzed out all the other things where the up was, because we know it's the one just under the up. So if we go for to up and then one pin down. So up, up conveniently happens to be, there's actually a dot, just about see that white dot? That white dot is on the pin that has up, that's pin nine. So we're just gonna connect to the one underneath and I'm gonna have to sort of get really in and close and personal to the board to see if there's this trace, we can follow it around somewhere. It really, it might go to some of these test points again while the while the soldering irons are <laughs> sort of just warming up just use the time to find that dot to go to the pin underneath it which i just have and i'm just going to probe around some of these vias and test points here because it may well be a connection between those two it obviously doesn't help us if there's a break in the wire between those and that's what the actual fault is um but yeah i think it was a long shot I don't think we've found one. Not to worry, we'll just have to solder onto the pin of the chip, which means we're going to need probably a much finer soldering iron tip than I have, um, because mine's massive. Look at the, the sort of difference between the two. So I'm just going to try to tin the Kynar, which you're not really going to get much on there because it's so tiny, but we'll go for it. It certainly has tin though. You can just see it, the very tiniest amount. Um, and excuse me if I obscure, obscure the view because I'm really going to have to get in there. Uh, 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 uh. In fact, where have I soldered it now? 
that is it. That's exactly where we want it. Very delicate. <laughs> so this is where sort of glue and things comes into play. If you have some glue, it's a, sometimes a good good time just to sort of put a piece on that because you're going to want it to stay there, especially if it is successful. So I'm just going to be very, very gingerly, mechanically wrap the wire around other components on the PCB, and you can see I'm sort of moving them around in these ways so that they'll sort of slightly grip and, and take the strain off uh, the, the sort of places. Uh, take the strain off it all while you're still holding it down. Oh, and, he, and I broke it, and I broke it doing that. Let's have another go. Okay, I got that back on again. I did need to sort of get in there with these sort of my tweezers and do it properly. That's fine. Sometimes you just can't rush these things. So this test point though, I did actually buzz out this test point and it happens to be connected to that left thing. So that's good. At least we have a test point here. So we can just dash that onto there. So technically we've got a direct connection between that pad and the chip. Whether or not it's the right thing, I don't know, but it gives us an opportunity to test it now. So power onto the PCB. Let's turn this bad boy on. Just going to try manually bridging that ground. Okay, so maybe pin eight, maybe it is left or maybe it's just not working. So I'm going to have a go with pin five. Because pin five to me, left, right, down, up could work too. So I'm going to move that and we'll try again in a moment. Ha ha! Success! Mario is moving left and right now. That is absolutely brilliant. And what the problem was, <laughs> it wasn't that it wasn't this pin. It was because I'd actually bridged the left and down accidentally elsewhere on the chip. So I just tapped it, tapped it literally with my craft knife and uh, cleared that sort of bit of gunk that got in there. So I can now say with uh, definitive authority that the Game Boy Advance pinouts for the controller are thus on this chip. So yeah, if you want to rewire that, you can. So what I'm going to do now is simply sort of put everything back together very gingerly and see if this sort of maintains its integrity while I'm doing that. I might just cut a bit of just regular, regular old insulation tape and just sort of place it strategically over sort of that wire, that bit of kynar, because really mechanically it's probably strong enough to just sort of stay there almost um, indefinitely and permanently. So if you imagine there's not much vibration or weight going to be put on that wire once it's all bonded down. So we can afford to just sort of put a few pieces here and uh, that's going to really just be the repair. I don't think we have to do anything more other than just successfully get everything back in place. So yeah, feel free if, to sort of check out now if you're if you're done. If this is all you came to see, that is the actual repair part kind of done. Because I'm now going to just reassemble it. Which, uh, but like, you know, if you're interested, keep watching. Keep watching. We'll see what we uh, stumble across. Because sometimes it doesn't quite seem as easy as we want and. I'll probably make some other mistake while I'm doing this and you'll learn from it and not do it. Now you can see I've got quite a bit too much kynar there. So what I could do is cut this and make a much neater link. But you know, I'm not going to. I think if I can just get it wadged in, fitted into the case, it's going to be fine and it's, it's just not going anywhere. So the first thing to do really is just to sort of dismantle the sort of screen because it's sticking to the game cartridge, it's kind of making a mess. Uh, let's just dismantle this, unattach the power supply connection because we won't need that really for the moment. In fact we won't need it at all hopefully. There we go, the screen now should just come free. I don't really want to get any more crap on the screen than we have to, so we're going to have to try to clean that off. And apparently you can get these things for cameras which are like little dusty brushes and I should own own one at least for the lenders but I don't because sometimes it's just a kind of a, a dry dust that you're trying to remove and uh, that probably would just be ideal for just 
wafting away some of those uh, screen uh, screen detritus. So that's the positive off, that's the negative off. I'm going to leave our little solder blobs on there. They're not going to do anybody any harm. You could just get some... Oh, I'll just show you. You could just get some of this solder braid if you want to and clear those, but if anything, you're enhancing the mechanical uh, strength of that by leaving it there. It's fine. I'm not going to worry about someone going, oh, somebody's been inside this. It's not original anymore. So a soldering iron can go off, and we just got to work out now how we're going to get this screen back in. So I'm going to look here at this plastic thing. It looks relatively dust free. I mean, apart from me blowing on it, which is probably going to introduce more dust, I think it's good enough. Now, this screen really does have quite a lot of dust and watermarking on it. Um, not sure I have the equipment really to keep that clean. I do have this brush that I use for brushing my desk. I'm going to just try to go a single pass or something. Yeah, that's worked really well actually. <laughs> there is some watermarking though on that screen. I'm really, really not sure how to get rid of that. I think that is that is a lens cloth type job. Okay, my solution of sort of just rubbing these sort of dry, dry-ish Q sticks after just sort of giving a gentle breath of mist on it. I can just see a very slight dimple here, but I don't think it's a dust. I think it might be an imperfection now in the actual sort of polarizer, so there's not really too much to do on that. I'm just going to just do again. I can see inside of the plastic screen these sort of similar dirt. It's probably a piece of dust that's caught inside here and actually pressed into that. But I think I think it's good enough. You know, we're talking about re, you know, recasing this later and you'll get all new bits like that. Let's not worry about it. Pop the screen in, stick it down, let's turn it around. <laughs> kind of streaky, but yeah, the streaks I think are on the plastic inner this screen here, the inside of that. Again, maybe we'll fit one of those afterburner front lights on it like we did on my other one all those years ago. Now these buttons, A and B, Y and A, which way do they go? That way, that way, only one way. Did you know that the buttons on a Super Nintendo controller are all different heights? Now you do. The reason they're all different heights is because uh, of the shape, you know, just it's more optimal, apparently, optimum to have your fingers near certain ones. Okay, that's those in. I'm trying to remember, do we need to get the shoulder pads and everything in when we fit this? I think we can add those afterwards. The moment of truth. I'm sure, things need to align. Oh, definitely make sure your ribbon cable is not stuck in there. Just giving it some gentle jiggling. Some gentle jiggling. Yep, yeah, that's kind of more or less locked in. Just holding it with my finger on there while I sort of find the screws. Oh, I can't. I'm looking at and there's like a whole sea now of potential screw holes. I can't work out where I could, took these out of. I'm going to... Th yeah. All right. So if you've forgotten where you've taken the screw holes out of, just sort of compare up to the back panel. There's basically nothing going on in this middle section of the back panel. So it looks like there might have been more than I took out because there's sort of, that looks like a screw hole. And that one looks like a screw hole, and there's one here that certainly looks like a screw hole. So we're just going to try those ones. Screwdriver. I'm still holding it off the desk because if I put it down, ah, if I put it down, the um, the keys will be trying to jump out. That's good now. I kind of want to see if I've got a screw that will fit in this side because. 
because it is just behind that D-pad, you think people sort of thumping on it. And, oh, there's a screw line on my desk. What size is that one? A convenient screw. See if that will regret putting that one in. Ah, it's too big. Far too big. Yeah, you've got to be careful if you're not using the right size screws for things, you might end up driving them through the front of the unit. Okay, let's not worry about that. Can't win them all. Ah! Oh, do you think that needs to go in somewhere? can just see the comments now. This is so boring. You're so boring putting this together and making all the mistakes. Can't you cut your video and edit it? Yeah, I could. But, you know, some people like to see the mistakes. Good. So that's trying to lever itself up now. Remember I said keeping this off the desk last time but that's okay I'm gonna get it in there buttons seem to be working how you'd want good so we've just got our shoulder buttons and our power buttons and whatnot to put in power button down here you can see it's just so dark on the camera but I'm pretty sure you can see that power button in there this is the left one so we've got to be careful with our bit of Kynar now. We want to root this. I'm just going to pull it right down the side of this tack switch. You see I've got a little bit of a loop going on here. I'm going to bring the loop over like so. And we do have a left hand side shouldery thing which I believe is this one. That's in place. We have a left button that we're going to fit right now. That's good, that's all out of the way. Nothing snagging on anything else. Get that shoulder in. Get that bit in there nicely. Screen ribbon connector. I think I feel like we're on the final straight here. The home straight. Come on now. quite want to cooperate but it has now gone in get that down get that down nice I think we're there I do think we're there so let's pop the back on now maybe while we're here I've got this bit of tape still locking around just make it a bit smaller we don't need the whole thing we've got that bit of um, a loop here that we've mentioned earlier this our loop. There's a bit of tape over that. A bit of tape. There you go, he's not going anywhere. I think that's it. It's not really getting disturbed by the motion of the shoulder as well, even though it runs by it. Get the back on. Come on now. Come on. We're almost there. We're almost there. The back is on. Right, so that's almost as good as you're going to get in terms of its assembly, apart from just putting the screws in. So before I put the screws in, it seems now is the ideal time to pop our cartridge and our game back in. Let's take the cartridge out, try again. Yes, Nintendo logo. Yeah! Let's have a quick go, shall we? Just make sure make sure it's where. Ho ho! Down. How do I test up though? Ah, I'm pretty sure. Up was working before, that's fine. marvellous. It makes me wonder though what happened to the original track because if you recall in the earlier video we studied that and there's just did not appear to be anything wrong with it but 
could just be the tiniest amount of corrosion, I suppose, or uh, some sort of electrical fault. But it seems unlikely to be an electrical fault. So this is our left-hand side now, where all of our mods are sealed up. Nothing's going to happen to them now. They're locked in forever. Game Boy is fixed. So if you've got a broken Game Boy, I think you just have a go. You've really got nothing to lose. I wonder how many are scrapped because of sort of things like that that are relatively fixable. If you picked up something in a sort of car boot sale or yard sale that doesn't work like that, yeah, just yank it open and see what you can do with it. If, um, if you need any advice, just ping me on Twitter. And I'm not necessarily uh, <coughs> the best person for advice. I mean, this is literally the first time I've done this, but you can see I've done it just through logical steps of trying to diagnose what the problem was, or how it could be resolved. There's my diagram. You can refer to that. I will hold it on the screen briefly. So there's your data blast. Press, press, plaw, 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 plaw. I can't speak. Press pause now. There you go, that's the chip, that's your pinouts. Could have buzzed out the other ones for the other up, down, left, uh, we've done that down, left, right, but we could have done the uh, shoulder buttons and the like. But you might have a resource on the internet for that. I remember looking there, it wasn't particularly obvious and jumpy out at you what the uh, wiring diagram was for a GBA. Now, GBA is now sealed. Cartridge popped back in. I'm going to bang it around a bit. Let's go. So far, so good. Press start. Left, right, down. Brilliant. Game Boy fixed. Please like this video if you like it. If you feel that way inclined, click subscribe. And as ever, thank you for watching.